Despite taking some big losses from stocks like AT&T and Verizon, July was an incredible month and left my portfolio sitting at an all time high, which we'll be talking about in this month's portfolio update where I'll show you how everything performed as a whole, along with which stocks I've been swooping up more shares of in the last month. And with that in mind, guys, leave me a comment below and let me know which stocks you bought in the last month. I'd be curious to hear what you've been adding to your portfolio. Anyway, getting right into it, taking a look at my dividend portfolio tracking spreadsheet, which you can start using for free. There is a link to grab it in the description of this video. I hope you check it out. But anyway, this tells us my portfolio is currently valued at $48,826.46, which is at an all time high, like by far guys. I mean, last month my portfolio was up quite a bit and it was close to an all time high, but this takes the cake by a long shot. If we look at the overall returns in my portfolio, I'm up about $2,500, which represents a 5.35% share price return. But if we throw dividends into the mix, I'm up over six grand representing a 13.6% total return. So things are looking really good all across the board right now. But getting into the performance just for the last month, I was up just over two grand. I gained $2,019 from the end of June. June until today, July 29th, when I'm recording this video. And as I'm sure you can imagine, most of these returns were share price gains. I was up about $1,800 all across the portfolio, but I had a really solid month in terms of dividend income as well. I brought in about $186 in income just in the month of July, which is an above average month for me. And these two combined, this $2,000 gain in the last month represents a 4.3% rate of return for the month of July, which is really solid. And I am neck and neck with the rest of the market. The S&P barely beat me by just a hair. I I am beating the Dow, but the NASDAQ is still got an advantage over me by about 1%, which is not too shabby. I'm still hanging in there pretty well. However, if we zoom out a little bit, looking at the year-to-date performance, I am trailing the market by quite a bit. I'm up 6.5%, which I'm happy with, but the S&P is crushing me up 20.5%. I'm not trailing the Dow by too much. The Dow is up 8.25%, but the NASDAQ is also crushing me. It's generated about six times the return of my portfolio this year with a 36.6% gain. And then zooming out once more, looking at the returns over the last 365 days, I'm still underperforming the market. I'm only up 5.8% compared to the S&P's 12.85%, the Dow's 10.3%, and the NASDAQ's 15.5%. It's all good though, guys, because no matter how much I'm underperforming the market by, or beating the market by, for that matter, the one constant is that my dividend income just continues to climb. Going back over to my spreadsheet, my projected annual dividend income reads $2,121.99, which is a near $26 gain compared to last month's reading where my projected annual income was just under $2,100. And on a year-to-date basis, this means that I have added over $200 of dividend income to this portfolio just from the start of 2023. At the start of the year, my annual income reading was $1,915, so we've made quite a big jump since then. Anyway, now switching gears and taking a look at the best and worst performing positions in my portfolio. As I'm sure you can imagine, with this portfolio sitting at an all-time high, things are looking pretty good. There was a lot of really Really strong performers this last month. But we're gonna start first with the worst performers, which as you can see are AT&T and Verizon, the two telecom companies in my portfolio, with AT&T actually dropping to its lowest share price in 30 years, which is pretty incredible. But both of these companies were brought down after the Wall Street Journal reported that lead sheath cables owned by the companies could be responsible for lead contamination and certain health issues that could arise from that. For now though, the situation is still developing, and from what I've seen, the companies are just playing defense and at least at least AT&T is saying the claims are pretty baseless, but we'll just have to see how this all plays out. And now switching gears and looking at my best performing stocks, as you can see, there were quite a few here that were up double digits just in the last 30 days. Starting here with KRC, who is coming back from the dead, guys, with a 16.7% gain just in the last 30 days. I love to see it. You know I love my KRC, so I love to see it doing well, but year to date, they are still down 7%. So they've got a little bit of room to continue climbing, and I sure hope they do, because it's getting pretty close to my average cost per share. Anyway, next up is Abby, who also had a really impressive month. They jumped 13.6% in the last 30 days after reporting a beat on both the top and bottom line for their quarterly earnings. But not unlike KRC, year-to-date Abby is still down, actually down a similar amount, down 7% so far in 2023. And believe it or not, 3M also had a really strong month. They saw a 13.3% gain also after reporting an earnings beat on both the top and bottom line. But just like the last two companies, they are still down year-to-date, down 8.6%. And then the last stock that saw a double digit gain in the last month was William Sonoma, who jumped 11.5%. 4%, and this is the most recent addition to my portfolio, and we're off to a great start. I think my position is up about 8% right now, but year to date, they're also seeing a really impressive gain up 23.3%. And then going back over here, there were a few other honorable mentions that performed
performed really well in the month of July. Intel jumped after reporting some pretty strong earnings. Main Street Capital Corporation jumped nearly 8%. Love to see that. And then Johnson & Johnson also had a 7% gain, with some others also do pretty well. A lot of green as we continue to scroll down here. But anyway, now switching gears and getting into my purchases for this last month. You guys know me. I had to buy some KRC. There hasn't been a single month since I started this position that I haven't bought KRC. And in July, I invested about $200 into it and picked up six shares, along with a $13.5 contribution to OBDC, formerly known as ORCC. I just picked up one share of that, and then I dumped a buttload of money. The most of my contributions went to William Sonoma. I invested over $500 into this one stock and bought four shares. And then as far as the Roth IRA goes, I invested $200 into this portfolio, $50 every single week in July, which brings my total contributions for the month to about $950, just a few shekels short of that. But anyway, on the topic of my Roth IRA, just like my main portfolio, Margarita Money is also sitting at an all-time high, currently valued at $4,800, almost to a T. And in the last month, this portfolio jumped 5.5%, pretty impressive. And if we look at its all-time performance, it is up double digits, up over 10%. But anyway, if we take this $4,800 Roth IRA that is bringing in $134 of annual dividend income and add that to my main portfolio that is valued at about $48.8 thousand, generating $2,100 of annual dividend income. This brings the total combined value of these portfolios to the highest I've ever seen it, $53,623.90. And my combined annual income with these portfolios is $2,256.74, which means that I am officially less than $150 away from reaching $2,400 of annual dividend income, which is a really cool milestone because it means that I'll be generating on average $200 of dividend income every single month. My goal by the end of the year is to reach that milestone and I feel pretty confident that I'll be able to hit it unless for some reason, God forbid, one of my companies cuts their dividend, I'm gonna knock on wood. But unless something like that happens, I should have no problem hitting that $2,400 of income. But anyway guys, switching gears and taking a look at my watch list, I actually made zero changes to this list in the month of July. The only one still sitting on here is Roland's. And I talked about this in a recent live stream, but with the addition of William Sonoma to my portfolio, I'm really not in the market for any new positions right now. I'm not actively hunting. Instead, right now I'm taking the time to revisit all of the stocks in my portfolio and re-familiarize myself with all of them. And in doing so, I'm in the process of building something that I call the dividend database, which essentially is my entire second brain for investing. This will house all of my stock research and investment ideas, and I'm gonna be using it pretty extensively moving forward to really hone my research process and keep track of all of the companies in my portfolio, as well as any other ones that I do research on in the future. Sometime soon, I'm gonna be sharing this database with you guys because I'd love for you to be able to get your hands on it. But for now, it's still in development as I'm still fine tuning things and really building this thing out. I want it to be cool. So I still got some work to do. I'm pretty excited about it though because I think it's really going to help me collect all of my investment thoughts and ideas and stay more organized, which will ultimately help me do better, more thorough research on all of these different companies. And I think for the same reason, it's going to be a great resource for you guys as well. And speaking of different companies, check out this next video right over here where I'm telling you about 10 of them that I think would be perfect for someone who is brand new to the stock market. This 10 stock portfolio has absolutely crushed the market. And if you're new to investing, it should give you some really good ideas when starting your brand new portfolio. So click right over here to check it out and I'll see you in the next one.